special series on the Avalon Initiative, where we focus on BIMSTEC and talk about perspectives and potential of the region. Country in focus on this episode is Bangladesh. And our guest speaker is Professor Shahab Imam Khan. He is currently serving as a research director at the Bangladesh Enterprise Institute and a senior faculty at the Department of International Relations at the Jahangir Nagar University in Bangladesh. Professor Khan has served as advisor, consultant, and board member in various international organizations, including UNDP in the Maldives and Bangladesh, UNODC, UN Women, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, and USAID, among others. He completed his fellowships at the universities of Delaware and Birmingham in the United States and UK. He studied at the Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, the University of Manchester, and the University of Dhaka. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us on this particular series. Professor Khan, if we were to start by asking you about Bangladesh and Bangladesh's involvement in BIMSTEC. We know that Bangladesh is deeply integrated into BIMSTEC and a lot of the various issues that are taken up in BIMSTEC are being addressed by Bangladesh. If you were to give us a brief overview of where it stands at the moment in terms of Bangladesh's contribution towards BIMSTEC. Uh, thank you very much, uh, George. Uh, I think uh, the post pandemic world is probably going, will be presenting us with a lot of challenges and perhaps opportunities for cooperation. And we must uh, make a distinction between our lives before the can pandemic and the post-pandemic. And that's exactly the moment where I think BIMSTEC has become one of the key institutions that should serve the purpose of all the people we have around us and which amounts to more than a multi-trillion dollar economy. And I, I think uh, one of the critical factor for the region and of course, then subsequently the countries uh, is to redefine the modalities of cooperation. And I believe that BIMSTEC sits in a position uh, which serves uh, everyone. And perhaps uh, this is an institution that is both uh, economically prospering as well as uh, innovation is taking place over here too. Now, given that particular genesis, I believe uh, uh, many of us would really appreciate the formation of BIMSTEC back in 1998 uh, in Dhaka. And uh, that was the second ministerial meeting where um, the countries identified the pressing uh, issues, starting from trade and investment to transport to energy, and even tourism, technology, and fisheries. Uh, and then subsequently in 2005, uh, in the eighth ministerial meeting in Dhaka, uh, the new areas also came up, right? Uh, including agriculture, public health. And when I mention public health, I must take this particular uh, credit for BIMSTEC uh, that they actually envisions that public health is going to be a major concern. Uh, poverty elevation is always there. And subsequently, when you took uh, the indicators such as environmental or natural disaster, uh, which is common for everyone in the BIMSTEC. I mean, starting from Thailand to uh, India, to Bangladesh, to Myanmar, and even for the Nepal and Bhutan. And even if you look at the ideas of uh, counterterrorism and transnational crime, I mean, we actually, actually really realized that a major bottleneck over here can always be the non-state actors. Uh, and then subsequently, we need to build upon uh, two critical factors, such as people-to-people -people contact and cultural cooperation. That means the whole idea of this institution is not only in terms of economics or security, it has uh, the cultural components which binds us together. And, and I believe uh, there is a greater need for us to focus on these issues and invest on these issues than ever. And Dhaka's engagement, and certainly Dhaka hosts the uh, Secretariat for BIMSTEC, uh, tells you that how serious Dhaka is about uh, the BIMSTEC, and it has been. And particularly Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has always been uh, in, the, uh, in the clear position of, uh, in which she believes multilateralism uh, is essential for all, all the countries to you know, prosper together. 
and we believe that uh, unless we have the uh, uh, we have the equitable growth or equal growth or what we call shared growth uh, the benefit will not be coming into everyone and we live in a world of globalization where connectivity matters economic interdependency matters and still shamefully though uh, our intra regional cooperation in south asia is very low compared to most of the places and i think dhaka understands that uh, that market has to be the prime concern uh, or the prime issue for each of the countries if they want to share their economic benefits and continue collaboration and that can be uh, that can be supplemented by all the issues that we have talked about uh, starting from counterterrorism to environment to culture to public health and here dhaka believes that uh, this multilateral platform brings the island countries as well as the long, landlocked countries which is another unique feature and which we believe that the connectivity must be a facilitated uh, for the benefits of those who are surrounded by sea or those who are surrounded by land and in that case i believe that uh, dhaka takes uh, bimstech more seriously than ever too so this is where dhaka stands and i believe uh, one of the critical factor that i must mention over here is at the moment uh, if you look at uh, the economies at least in bangladesh's economy is thriving and we believe that uh, this has to be uh, translated into shared benefits for everyone and that's again bimstech would come in and this is the reason uh, the government has a critical focus uh, critical in a sense uh, in a very positive way more constructive way to bolster the process of uh, uh, bimstech and we believe that uh, uh bangladesh has some pending issues with myanmar um thailand has pending issues with myanmar there are illegal fishing we are talking about maritime the new technologies new ch challenges is maritime areas and dhaka believes that uh, this is one of the fantastic uh, uh platform where everyone can actually come and talk uh, um, through open and informative uh, or uh, factual uh evidences and i think this is very critical for dhaka at the moment so overall uh this is not only the issue of cooperation but also about uh, confidence building uh to resolve the pending issues and see everything beyond the myopia of security or politics and i must mention that uh, we also really uh, take it as a note that there is a a uh, blurring uh, space between uh, uh, geopolitics and geo strategy too so where do we maneuver how do we maneuver through these particular uh, areas will also be uh, a critical challenge so we need to address this critical challenge too and we are also sitting in between two critical uh, agenda global agenda the chinese led uh bri and the us led in the pacific strategy and in which we also find convergences and divergences too uh, so this is what i think uh, also allows uh particularly the landmass between the southeast and the south asia uh to really come together and find the best possible uh solution to the great power that is unfolding across the region so this is where dhaka probably stands in a uh, with a very solid background Uh, and i think uh, another critical factor that dhaka would essentially need to focus on or perhaps uh, uh, the uh, member states should focus on uh, is expanding the scope of bimstech too i mean the membership can always be expanded uh, because uh, when we have thailand we can always go up to indonesia uh, and perhaps uh, this is where uh, more critical resources will be uh, bolstered in and the uh, mutual uh, critical uh, uh, resources is very uh, important uh, to really develop some sort of consensus uh, in terms of ethical governance of waters and moral governance of technologies so we need to look into that thing so it is time for bimstech to come up with very specific charters uh, that can help us uh, in guiding the new generation and the future generation too and uh, this time i believe uh looking forward to future uh, uh and 
securing resources, common resources for the common future uh, must be discussed uh, to a great extent. You're also leading us to another question that I wanted to raise with you, and that is when we look to the future, when we look forwards, in terms of a region, what more? You mentioned how we should look at expanding the membership of the grouping, trying to bring in more resources, uh, more views, more ideas, make it that much more representative. In terms of what we can do at this present moment, we are now uh, going to be facing another summit, and then hopefully we're going to be having more regular ones in the years ahead. What tangible measures can be taken right away in terms of integrating that much further, bringing our countries closer. We have priority areas that we all focus on. What more can we do to really enhance this cooperation amongst our member states and deepen the integration? I think, um, George, you hear uh, the critical factor is to realizing uh, the new realities. I mean, uh, this is something that has to be factored in, in the discussion. Uh, that will take place at the summit level. And uh, here the question remains that uh, whether BIMSTEC uh, will be doing business as you should, or will it be stuck within the uh, member states uh, fighting on their own uh, national interests? Now, of course, we definitely should respect national interest. And there is a limit for uh, exchanging uh, information, which is legitimate and perhaps a sovereignty factor comes in. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there are new things happening. I mean, the monopoly of in information is no longer in the hands of the states. Uh, there is the new scientific breakthroughs are coming in, which is beyond uh, all beyond the statist ideas of uh, innovation. Uh, and there is an absolute uh, uh, boom of uh, youth who has completely different uh, ideas about uh, completely different ideas about social capital, political capital, as well as the intellectual capital. Now that's a new reality that is unfolding. We might not be seeing it just right away within two, three months of time, but certainly if you take uh, the time coming ahead, uh, that is one of the critical factors that will be deciding the future of uh, the policies, future of governance, and of course, future of cooperation. So given that, I think uh, one of the critical factor uh, that should be fed into the system is that we have uh, a longer term vision. And when we look at Bay of Bengal, I mean, critically, uh, Bay of Bengal is interlinked with other seas too. So it can be seen through the transatlantic prism or trans-Pacific prism, or even you can it can be seen as a, a part of the entire Indo-Pacific uh, gamut. So that means the Bay of Bengal that we talk about cannot be seen only as a Bay of Bengal entity. Rather, it has to be expanded you know, with the countries this, that shares the maritime boundary with Bay of Bengal. And uh, if, if you just take an example of pollution or even depletion of uh, fisheries or extraction of uh, marine resources, I mean, these have all, these all has some sort of spillover effect on each other. So that's the reason uh, there has to be a consensus that uh, 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 the countries that also shares or the spillover effect or the scientifically uh, uh, connectivity with the water resources should be brought into here. So this is one scientific explanation as well as uh, the economic explanation that we should be look forward to in expanding our membership base. The second important factor is, as I mentioned, that the great power gain that is essential. Uh, I mean, we might uh, want to be politically correct by saying uh, we bypass that, but the geopolitical reality is quite different. So henceforth, I believe that uh, our uh, neighboring countries are well aware of the unfolding uh, uh, situations, uh, starting from all the way to South China Sea, uh, to the Arab Sea, and perhaps uh, this is where uh, the greater cooperation in terms of maritime security is needed. I mean, one example can always be if there is uh, some sort of nuclear disaster in one of the waters, uh, the other waters will no longer be safe. So hence for the, what we see in Indonesian waters or Malaysian waters is perhaps uh, has some sort of implication for us too. I mean, uh, whether it is through the natural resources, the implication over the natural resources or the political too. So I think uh, the second explanation is that we have to have our political and security mindset right. 
And the third important factor is the economy. I mean, all the economies are booming. I mean, everybody's economy. And you have recently seen that regional comprehensive economic partnership has come into effect. And there are other partnerships that will be coming into effect too. So again, uh, having access to all these uh, plethora of uh, organizations, subsystems and subsystems, I believe we have uh, an impetus uh, for the statist collaboration or perhaps the government to government collaboration, or at least um, at the grassroots level, the uh, people to people collaboration with all these countries will be essential. And we must not forget there is CERC and there is ASEAN too. So I believe that BIMSTEC has some sort of stake in ASEAN stability too. I mean, when I mention stability in a sense, the economic prosperity that ASEAN is showing in which you, we can always be a partner. Uh, and it should not be a single state uh, driven observership, uh, but rather the whole institution as BIMSTEC can always be cooperating with ASEAN because at the end of the day, you also need a connectivity that goes through all the way uh, from uh, Nepal uh, through India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, and it should not stop at the borders of Thailand. And it should all go all the way after Singapore. Uh, at least at the maritime, we're doing that. So I believe uh, there is a, a rational, I mean, socio-political or uh, economic political rational for us to really cooperate and see it beyond the uh, very myopia. Uh, that we often think that BIMSTEC should always remain within where it is. And if you look at the future, I mean, technological future, artificial intelligence, we also need to innovate. I mean, and that innovation can come through the barter of resources or perhaps the sharing of resources. So this is where I think uh, another major uh, focus should come. And last but not least, I mean, at least I can uh, say that Dhaka is one of the key factors in global climate change movements. I mean, uh, environmental protection ecosystem movements. And that also makes us to understand, uh, makes us believe uh, that uh, whole, uh, whole spectrum of uh, climate change and disaster management, I mean, let me put the management part here, um, or dealing with adaptation and stuff, the resilience, we really need to also look into what's happening in uh, Indonesia and Indonesians can always be a part of the South Asian or the Southeast Asian uh, uh, efforts in mobilizing better resources for the global common. Uh, and that's exactly, I believe, uh, BIMSTEC will play a critical role. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for giving us that clear overview of Bangladesh's involvement in BIMSTEC, but also going forward, what we can do to deepen integration, widen it, increase the scope of the grouping, as you talked about very clearly, how we should look at involving ASEAN member states, bringing them on board, because there is much to be gained by both sides. BIMSTEC would also be gaining from ASEAN, and ASEAN would also look to further integrate with countries in South Asia. So thank you once again, Professor, for joining us on this special series being brought out by the Avalog Initiative, where we're looking at BIMSTEC, we're looking at perspectives from member states, and we're looking at the potential for the grouping as we go forward.